of audiovisual translation. So today, uh, in the previous lectures, we talked about subtitling and dubbing. We uh, gave an overview of what is subtitling and what is dubbing. And then you did some projects about subtitling and some dubbing projects. So you have three, I think two to three dubbing projects and three subtitling projects. In today's lecture, we will talk about voiceover. Another vital type of audiovisual translation is called voiceover. So let's find out what is voiceover in audiovisual translation. Voiceover translation is a beneficial component to consider when targeting native speakers of language other than English. So usually it's used for instructional videos for employee trainings, product demonstrations, interactive e learning, documentaries. All of these can be used in voiceover. So it's not enough to simply translate words into another language. You have to know your target audience's culture and adapt your content. To fit that. This means that it's extremely important to adapt the to adapt the, the, the language into the audience's culture. That's why it's very important to, to, to make them understand what you are saying so as to fit their culture. The same has to be done with any e-learning instructional courses and videos, which is why voiceover translation is a must for global growth inside your company as well as outside it. Even uh, th That's why nowadays, particularly in the light of COVID-19 and in the light of all lock lockdowns that we have been seeing and uh, we tend to e-learning instead of on-campus learning. A voiceover is a, is a very good way or is a very good tool for uh, courses, for instructions, and it's a very good tool for e-learning. Why is voiceover necessary? Because of several reasons. The first one is to it makes your localized e-learning content and videos look and sound professional. Like written content languages can be very different when spoken. So there are some of the some of the uh, characteristics uh, accompany the written accompany the spoken language. Uh, so written language is somehow different from spoken ones. Not using one language for all of your training materials, but several of them. You can not only use one language, you can use several languages uh, for the training materials for translation purposes. It's also used for, promotion, uh, for promotional purposes, for, rec, for, for advertisements and for all of these uh, media reclams, so on and so forth. So a native speaker can make your content much more effective and professional when using voiceover translation. Your audience are able to fully immerse into material without into, into the material without keeping up with words on screen. So that's why your audience are, will be able to fully engross into the material that you are presenting. If your videos has, if your video uh, has also more than one speaker, subtitle make it increasingly difficult to follow who is speaking. But voiceover will help the problem, help help to solve the problem. And since many videos are viewed on a mobile on a mobile device, subtitles can be hard to read. So that's why voiceover will replace it. It's also with voiceover translation, your customers and employees can relax and hear everything they need to know in their native language. So that's why it's extremely 
beneficial nowadays with the new challenges, with the new health challenges that we have been seeing and experiencing all around the globe. So giving them a level of comfort that subtitles simply can't compete with. So that's why with voiceover translation, your customers will be much more relaxed than subtitles because they cannot concentrate on the screen or they may have eyesight problems and so on and so forth. It's also vital for documentaries, conferences, ads, promotions, and many, many other things that are beneficial for business purposes, marketing purposes as well. What are the types of voiceover or voiceover translation? So the first time is called voice replacement. What, let's see what's voice replacement in voiceover. Voice replacement, this technique is exactly what it, sound, what it sounds like and what many clients think of looking at voiceover translation. How? By muting the original speakers in your video, the new language speakers replace, replace the original words with their native language. Of course, as we said, with the, with the adaptation of the content so as to fit the culture of the audience while you are presenting. So the difficulty in this technique is trying to match the original voices such as emphasizing certain points. So in this case, you, are, you have to emphasize on certain points uh, and emphasize some of the aspects that you are targeting. The second type of voiceover transition is called UN voiceover, uh, UN style voiceover. This is, this is a popular choice. Often, many videos and e-learning materials need the original speaker's voice to be heard in addition to the audience's native language. So as to see and match, so as to see and match whether the translation matching or not, or sometimes so as to make it as original as possible. With this type of voiceover translation, the original speaker voice is not replaced, but simply spoken over. So you speak over the original voice, which sounds more original than if you mute the original speaker. So the audience can hear the original voice for just a few seconds before the new voiceover transition is heard. This surpasses the volume of the original speaker. Of course, you have to surpass your voice to the voice of the original speaker. So this voiceover transition technique is especially helpful when you want your employees or customers to relate to the original voice while still being immersed in their native language. So the other type of voiceover translation is called off-screen voiceover translation. This is a common or this is common with e-learning courses where voiceover transition is heard off screen and the user can follow on screen text and animations. So you just adapt the, uh, or uh, change the uh, off-screen video, uh, off-screen audio, but the animations and the text on screen text remain the same. So you will want to employ this technique when it's not video being down, being shown. So, so it's not hard for this type of voiceover transition to be produced. It's not hard for this type of, of voiceover transition to be produced, often requiring only one actor. And the new language can often be synchronized or syn synced to the original text. So that's why we need only one actor so as to do to, to play this role. Why? Because there are no, mm, not many speakers, but for lectures, courses, this type is very beneficial. Okay. The other type of voiceover is called lip syncing or dubbing, or lip synchronization or dubbing. This voiceover translation option is probably most recognizable to you as it is the service utilized in foreign films. If you want your videos to look 
uh, your video to look as though it was originally filmed with the audience's native language. Dubbing is the voiceover translation you want. So you have to dub the voiceover translation. While it does provide your video with a level of professionalism that can't be beat, allowing you to stand out above your competitors, it's also an incredibly difficult type of voiceover transition, which requires not only blending the new voice with all of the other audios in the video, but it also means hiring a voiceover translation talent that can match the language to the lips of the original speaker to make it fluent. For this case, you have to choose, you have to carefully choose the words that match the original speaker. So you have to have a lot of word choices paradigmatically so as to put the closest word to the lips to, the, to, 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 to make the lips synchronized and to make it as original as possible. The other type of voiceover transition is called actor replacements. While much less common, organization can adopt can opt to reshoot or film a video with a new native language, native speaker actor to replace the, 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 the English speaker on screen. Typically, this is done in a green screen type environment. Usually, the actor will replace it. So, certainly, this is the most costly option, however, if a budget allows. It may also arguably be the most effective solution. It's the, it is the most uh, effective solution, but it's one of the costly ones in, if, 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 if you compare it to the other types of uh, voiceover translation. So what are the steps? We, we talked about uh, it is usage. We talked about the types. Let's talk about the steps of making a voiceover translation. So the first step in voiceover transition is translating your audio content. So translate your audio content, having this the script, or getting the script of the uh, of the uh, of the audio or the um, file is extremely essential. So it's translated into a language you are looking for. Then you will have to know your target audience for the voiceover translation. So you have to translate it, then you have to know your target audience for the voiceover translation. Then, after the, after the proofread or edited script has been translated to as close to the original length as possible, you have the option to review it before choosing your voiceover translation, translation talent. You have to review it for lip synchronization, for proper voice or for proper actor to play the role, so on and so forth. So from here, the new voiceover translation is recorded in the technique you've chosen and the video is edited. So the video is formatted and synced or synchronized so that it all allows well and looks and sounds professional. So all you need, all, all you need in, 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 uh, in the steps or in the techniques for voiceover transition is these four things, or the, the, the four important things. The first one, script transition. The second one, select a voice talent. The third one is actual voice recording. And the final one is delivery of the recorded files. Of course, after the delivery of the recorded files, you review the completed video. So that's all for today, talking about voiceover uh, translation. Uh, dear students, for next week, you have an exam. But for the week, for the next week, but one, you have to uh, prepare a documentary, uh, eight minutes an eight minute documentary an eight minute documentary of voiceover from english to kurdish or from arabic to kurdish or from 
Persian to Kurdish, uh, and you have to post it on Classroom. So I will make an announcement on, 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 on Classroom, and you have to submit it there. And until then, take care and wish you good luck for, the, for your next week's exam.